You ready? This is actually kind of the first time I've been honest. Besides being honest, you know, with my attorneys. Even that, I haven't been completely honest with them. <laughs> Welcome back to Bougie Bible. Today's video explores the intriguing case of Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Let's get into it. Growing up, Gypsy's mother, Dee Dee Blanchard, made false health claims leading to serious diagnoses and medical interventions. Contrary to appearances, Gypsy wasn't actually unwell, her mother had fabricated her symptoms. Experts attribute Dee Dee's behavior to Munchausen syndrome by proxy, suggesting her desire to be a caretaker led her to feign and induce illness in her daughter. The shocking truth about Gypsy and her mother surfaced after Gypsy orchestrated her online boyfriend to unalive Dee Dee in 2015. Born in 1991, Gypsy Rose faced health claims from Dee Dee since infancy, starting with sleep apnea. By the age of 8, Dee Dee asserted Gypsy had leukemia and muscular dystrophy, necessitating a wheelchair and feeding tube. Dee Dee continued fabricating medical issues, including seizures, asthma, and sensory impairments. Gypsy, due to Dee Dee's actions, underwent various surgeries, took numerous medications, and used a breathing machine for sleep. Dental issues arose, potentially linked to medications, absent salivary glands, or neglect leading to the extraction of Gypsy's decayed teeth. In my research on this case, I found a documentary clip where Dee Dee's brothers and sisters talked about how she treated Gypsy. They mentioned that Dee Dee's behavior wasn't surprising to them because they believed their mother treated Dee Dee in a similar way to how she treated Gypsy. That's when we realized Dee Dee's doing to Gypsy what mom did to her. When Dee Dee was born, my mom said that she came along with all these sicknesses, heart murmur, and stuff like that. My mom would always make us go play outside, and it was like, oh, well, your sister's not feeling good. Your sister's got an upset stomach. She's got a headache. Y'all go play outside. Be quiet. Leave her alone, you know? Dee Dee's mother did the same things to her that Dee Dee would later do to Gypsy. As she got older, Dee Dee couldn't get excited. Dee Dee couldn't jump around. She couldn't play outside. She couldn't overheat herself. She was not allowed to assist with chores. If Dee Dee didn't want to do it, well, then she didn't have to because the heart murmur. It was used like a crutch for a long time. But Dee Dee was basically not as sick as it was to believe. Dee Dee's mother kept her sick to keep her close and have control over her. She would spend the most time with Dee Dee, treating her different from her siblings, and give her everything she wanted and made sure the attention was always on her. We didn't get to go to college, but Dee Dee went to college. We didn't get a car when we were growing up. Dee Dee got the car. If you wanted something, you had to go out and earn it. But Dee Dee just wanted it and got it. Dee Dee was into beauty pageants, and my mama went out and bought her the prettiest dress, the prettiest shoes. She was just all about the attention. The desire for attention followed Dee Dee throughout her life and got to its worst point when she had Gypsy and started to make up fake illnesses for attention and sympathy. Let me provide some background on how Gypsy Rose met her ex-boyfriend, Nicholas Gojon. They reportedly connected on a Christian dating website in October 2012, but didn't meet face-to-face -face until 2015. It was during their second meeting that Gypsy orchestrated for Nick to come over and carry out the unaliving of Dee Dee. Nicholas Nick Godajan, Gypsy Rose Blanchard's ex-boyfriend who was convicted of murdering her mother Dee Dee Blanchard, is still in prison amid Gypsy's release. Gypsy and Nick met on a dating website for Christian singles in 2013 when Gypsy was 21 years old. They spoke for two years strictly online, developing a relationship in which they discussed starting a new life together, including getting married and starting a family. They then met for the first time in person in 2015 when they went to see the movie Cinderella. Their second in-person meeting was in June of that year when Nick Godajan traveled from Wisconsin to Missouri to act out their plan of killing Gypsy's mother, Dee Dee. Godajan would later say that he believed killing Dee Dee was, quote, imperative to ensuring he and Gypsy could spend their lives together. 
On June 9th, 2015, after Dee Dee fell asleep, Godijon entered the house, and while Gypsy hid in the bathroom, he stabbed Dee Dee Blanchard to death. The two of them skipped town together and stayed in hiding for the next four days until eventually police caught up to them. The couple were then arrested and charged with Dee Dee Blanchard's murder. 2016, Gypsy Rose pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and got a sentence of 10 years in prison. Nick Godijon, on the other hand, was charged with first-degree murder. At his trial in 2018, there was no dispute whether Godijon was the one to actually kill Dee Dee, but his attorneys argued that he had been manipulated by Gypsy. With this argument, they attempted to get his charges reduced to second-degree murder, but they were unsuccessful, and in November 2018, Nick Godijon was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. At his sentencing hearing in February 2019, Godijon said, quote, I was blindly in love. That was always very much the case. Godijan had no history of violence, and it's reported that after the murder, he was very upset. In fact, he later told ABC 2020, quote, I felt horrible about it. When me and her were in the hotel room, Gypsy kept on telling me, stop crying, there's no reason to cry. He said, I did what I did because I loved her. I really wanted a life with her. Later in 2019, Nick Godijan gave an interview from prison for an oxygen special. In that interview, he said that him and Gypsy were soulmates. He said, those five days when I was actually with her, physically with her, those five days were the most intense and magical and awe-inspiring days I've ever had. He also said, somehow I just knew deep within my heart, some way me and her would end up being together in the end. And he said that's why he committed the murder. He wanted to make sure her mom was not going to harm her anymore. Godijon is currently serving his life sentence at the Potosi Correctional Center in Mineral Point, Missouri. In August 2022, he was in court asking for his conviction to be set aside and for a new trial to happen on the grounds that he had ineffective counsel. But in March 2023, his motion to vacate, set aside, or correct judgment and sentence was denied. He will be remaining in prison for the rest of his life. Now, I recognize let's that some may be hesitant to hear Nicholas's perspective on Gypsy, Nicholas but I think it's Godijon, crucial to grasp the mindset he had during the time of this Didi terrible crime. About Gypsy it's reported that Nick has an IQ situation. of 82 and functions now, at a level me, similar to a 10 know, to 11-year-old child. Is there anything you'd like to say before I pronounce sentence? Uh, uh, maybe a little. Yes, sir. Um, well, uh, when this whole thing happened, that I've said it before in my statements, is very much the truth, so I'll just say it again. Uh, when this whole thing happened, all I ever really wanted to be was with Miss Blanchard. That's all I ever wanted to be. I've never known what it was like to have a motherly love. I've never known what it was like to have a female connection. I've never known any of that. None of it. Because I've never known it as part of the reason why I strive so hard to get it so much to the point where I don't even understand what it even feels like to have a female connection. It's missing. It's a missing link. It's always been a missing link. It's always been one. And that's the reason why I guess when I got so deep into this situation where I fell in love so deeply, they do say, and they've always said it, love is blind. They've always said that. Well, I'll admit it, I was blinding in love. That was always very much the case. It was always that way. So, I understand that you're a fair judge. I've heard it from both my attorneys. And all I ask is just for mercy, please. Yes, what? Mercy of any form. That's all I ask. After Gypsy's release, she has been on various media tours, sharing a lot about herself and her life. Social media has started questioning some of Gypsy's stories, so let's explore what people are saying online. But before we dive in, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to Bougie Bible. Don't forget to hit the notification bell to stay updated whenever I upload new content. I'm starting to notice something and tell me if you're noticing it too, but it seems like the media frenzy tide is beginning to turn against Gypsy Rose. In all of the posts that used to glorify her, stand with her, it now seems like a lot of people are turning against her. Many are saying that she is a master manipulator who only is concerned with fame and that's why she only follows a handful of social media accounts and they're all media outlets like TMZ and things like that. A lot of people also don't love the fact that her ex-boyfriend, who is the one who committed the murder against her mother, is still in jail while she's out free and getting this like huge national press tour. 
But here's another thing that makes me wonder if she is in fact a master manipulator. She says that she doesn't identify as a murderer because her ex-boyfriend is the one who committed the murder, right? Like it's something yeah. that I'm going to have to address yeah. because it's always in my comments. Like, why are we glorifying a murderer and this and that and the other? And, um, you know, I don't want to have to remind people every single time that I'm not the one that committed the act of the kill. But she admitted, point blank, that she did shoot her mother before she was murdered, saying she grabbed the gun and she pulled the trigger several times. She also says that the only reason that Dee Dee survived is because it was a BB gun, which when she grabbed the gun, she thought it was a regular gun. She didn't know it was a BB gun. She also says she wasn't intending to kill her, but who grabs a gun, pulls the trigger a bunch of times, not trying to kill somebody. This also coincidentally happened right after one of their very heated arguments. Is there more manipulation here than on the surface? Something that also kind of feels weird is that in the whole slew of interviews she's been doing in the past week or so, anytime she's asked directly about her involvement with convincing her ex to murder her mother and all of those things, she quickly shuts it down or her PR team does and she just says, I can't talk about that. I'm focusing on my healing. I'm not the murderer. But you are kind of the one who relentlessly messaged him and so kind of forced his hand into doing it when he said he didn't want to. So why aren't you taking any accountability for it? I did a deep dive kind of just like dismantling her recent docuseries that she did with Lifetime and all of these interviews, breaking down all of the new confessions, the allegations, even like the sexual ABUSC allegations, all of those things. So it's all on my podcast if you haven't listened yet. It's pretty wild. Which side of the fence do you stand on now? Do you think she is just a master manipulator or no?